from the Sky Dome, TSN presents the 1989 Sports Celebrities Festival. This morning, the breakfast in support of Canadian Special Olympics. in support of Canadian Special Olympics. We have a star-studded cast for you this morning. Let's meet them now. First of all, we begin with Toronto Blue Jays catcher, Ernie Witt. He's been with the Blue Jays since 1977 and he's the only original member of the team. Over the years, he's proven himself as one of the top catchers in Major League Baseball and a very close friend of the Canadian Special Olympics. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Beckstead. <laughs> Ian
Hogan is an offensive lineman with the Toronto Argos. A graduate of Richmond University, he's an eight-year CFL veteran. Next, the pocket rocket, Ale Richard. Richard's an NHL career span 20 years, all with the Montreal Canadiens. He's won 11 Stanley Cups and has been inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Sandy Holly. A great ambassador, both on and off the racetrack. Sandy was honored with the Sovereign Award in 1988 as Man of the Year in Canadian Thoroughbred Racing. Sportscaster, Brian Williams. Brian Williams, a familiar face for all Canadians who follow sports. Brian is the host of CBC Sports Weekend and won the Gemini Award this year as Canada's Sportscaster of the Year. Olympic gold medalist, Roger Kingdom. Roger Kingdom is considered the best hurdler in the world. He's one of only two men in Olympic history to win back-to-back -back gold medals in the high hurdles. In 1992, Roger Kingdom hopes to make it three. Ladies and gentlemen, Rocky DiPietro. A 12-year CFL veteran with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. This season, he surpassed Tommy Joe Coppi as the CFL's all-time leading scorer. Special Olympic athlete, Diane Woods. <laughs> Diane is one of our Special Olympic athletes of the year. She competes in bowling and track and field. She's from Chelmsford, Ontario. Tom Satch Sanders. Satch played 13 seasons with the Boston Celtics, playing on eight championship teams. He's currently the NBA's director of community and player programs. Lou Franceschetti. Lou is a popular new addition to the Toronto Maple Leafs forward unit. After 11 years with the Washington Capitals organization, his hard work ethic and grinding style has made him a fan favorite in Toronto. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Cherry. Canada's most colorful and outspoken hockey broadcaster. He's quick with his opinions, which are known for their candor, humor, and insight. Tom Hankey. Terminator, Hankey of the Toronto Blue Jays, is considered one of the best relievers in baseball. It was only fitting Tom was on the mound to nail down the Jays' second American League East pennant in the last four years. Our guest speaker, Mr. Rocky Blyer. He got the game-winning touchdown, giving the Pittsburgh Steelers the 1979 Super Bowl title. He's a good friend to the Special Olympics and serves on the international board. Jackie joyner Kersey. She's the Olympic gold medal holder in the long jump and heptathlon. A very community-minded lady, she has established the Jackie joyner Kersey Community Foundation and is on the board of directors of the St. Louis Girls Club. Daryl Sittler! He rose to prominence as captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's the Leafs' all-time leading scorer and set an NHL record with 10 points in a single game. Ladies and gentlemen, Bart Connor. A former U.S. Olympic gymnast. In 1984, he scored a perfect 10 in the parallel bars, giving the U.S. its first gymnastics gold medal since 1904. Lance Chomet. He earns his keep 
best place kicker with the Toronto Argos. In 1988, Chomick became only the third player in CFL history to score more than 200 points in a single season. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Burke. In 1989, Burke emerged from the shadows of the bullpen committee to establish himself as one of the premier stoppers in the National League. He was the highest winning percentage of all pitchers in the Expo's history. A warm welcome for Special Olympian Carl Rainsford. One of our athletes of the year, Carl is 16 years old and competes in many Special Olympic sports, including soccer, pro hockey, softball and basketball. He's a team player, always willing to help out his teammates. Hurricane Helen, Helen Kelsey. In just three years on the Women's Professional Tennis Tour, the name Helen Kelsey evokes images of grit, determination, hustle, and heart. She's won the Canadian Women's Championship twice and is currently ranked number one in Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. George Reed. One of the greatest fullbacks in CFL history. George Reed played on the great Saskatchewan Rough Rider teams of the late 60s and the early 70s. He was a league all-star nine times. A warm welcome for Mr. Scott Goodyear. Scott started his racing career at the tender age of nine, racing go-karts. He was the fastest Canadian in this year's Molson Indy and last year won the Rothmans Porsche Turbo Cup Series. Up next, Rob Lamage. Rob was part of the Calgary Flames Stanley Cup winning team last season. This year, in his first season with the Toronto Maple Leafs, he's already been named team captain. He's a solid defenseman with a booming shot. Cito Gaston. Cito became the fourth black manager in Major League history when he took over the Toronto Blue Jays last season. He's popular with both players and fans alike. Last season, he took the Jays to the American League Championship Series. A warm welcome for Vladislav Trechiak. Considered one of the best goalies in hockey history. Who will ever forget his play in the 1972 Summit Series? Today, Vladislav Trechiak is an excellent ambassador for the game of hockey. He scored the most famous goal in hockey history, winning the 1972 Summit Series for Team Canada. Today, he's the Ontario Director of Athletes in Action. And finally, a man whose name is synonymous with Special Olympics in Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome for Mr. Lanny McDonald. Lanny ended his NHL career in fine style, helping the Calgary Flames win the Stanley Cup last season. A first for the Flames and a first for Lanny McDonald. He's retired now and spends much of his time working with the Canadian Special Olympics. These are your celebrities for this morning's 1989 Canadian Special Olympics Celebrity Breakfast. Let's give them a warm welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, your MC for this morning's Special Olympics Celebrity Breakfast, one of the best sportscasters in the business, TSN's John Wells. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the largest fundraising breakfast in the world. Thank you for coming. That inspiring piece of music we enjoyed during the opening ceremonies was generously contributed by Toronto producer and composer David Crystal. Thank you, David, for providing such a dynamic beginning to this seventh annual Sports Celebrities Breakfast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen at the head table, please be seated and we'll get on with the show. In 1983, this breakfast was held for the very first time. 800 guests attended that year. 
$4,300 was raised in the support of regional programs of the Canadian Special Olympics. This being the seventh year, the Sports Celebrities Breakfast is now entertaining some 2,600 people here today. Sports Celebrities Breakfast is now raising money and awareness for Canadian Special Olympics programs from coast to coast in Canada. The Canadian Special Olympians' primary objective is to contribute to physical, social, and psychological development of mentally handicapped Canadians through their regular participation in sport. This experience will equip these determined people for eventual integration into regular community athletic programs and activities. This past summer, our TSN cameras were witness to the Ontario Special Olympic Summer Games. Have a look with us now, and you'll see why these men and women are called Special Olympians. This was the scene at Esther Shiner Stadium in North York, site of the opening ceremony. The crowd came alive as the athletes entered the stadium. Athletes are here from 12 different regions throughout the province of Ontario. The president of the Ontario Special Olympics is Mr. Frank Selke. To our wonderful athletes and coaches, these are your games. Over the next few days, it is our hope that in the spirit of true sportsmanship and in the company of your peers, you will realize personal enrichment, good fellowship, and the satisfaction of doing your best. The highlight of the opening ceremonies was the Ontario Law Enforcement Torch Run. This year, 3,000 policemen ran across the province covering 3,000 miles. They raised over $300,000 for the Ontario Special Olympics. Carrying the torch into the stadium are Ontario Special Olympic Athletes of the Year, Diane Woods and Carl Rainsford, along with former Metro Police Chief Jack Marks. The Honorary Games Chairman is Bobby Smith of the Montreal Canadiens. Good luck. Have fun. I know you'll do your best. And I know we'll all be inspired by what you do. I now have a special task and pleasure as chairman of the games. I now declare the 1989 Ontario Special Olympics Summer Games officially open. Athletes compete in four different sports. We'll start our review with the bowling competition. The teams were co-ed and played both five and ten pins. Nora Patterson is from just outside Ottawa. She's 30 years old, and she really is a great example of what Special Olympics is all about. I like walking, and I like bowling because you can meet all kinds of people. Like, for instance, last night we had a big par par parade, and I was so excited seeing those thousands of people. You know, it's um, a miracle, and it's a blessing to be here. Brian Hayward of the Montreal Canadiens is an honorary coach. As you can see, he's pretty comfortable with these special athletes. Special Olympics is very special to him. It's pretty inspiring for me to see how excited these kids get just for the opportunity to participate. Uh, when here at the bowling alleys, when they make a good play or get a strike or something like that, they go crazy. And uh, the whole thing to me, it, it just really... I think it's something that I can get a lot out of in my own career and uh, realize how important the competition is at, at any level. We know the team, Burlington, eh? Yeah. We've seen them play before. they played our other teams before. Right. Yeah. We know they play very good. Yeah. Yeah. They sometimes play better than us. Yeah. But what we're going to do is we're going to play as well as we can. We may not beat them, but we're not going to get all shook up because we don't be beat them. Right on? We're going to have fun. We're going to play as hard as we can. So when you walk off, at least you know you did a good job. That's, right. That's all you can do. Okay, pals? All right. Soccer was the only team sport at Summer Games 89. It's also co-ed. <laughs> Dave Monteith is a coach from Niagara Falls. We've got, uh, we've got three of our athletes that when they first come to us uh, four years ago, couldn't even run to kick a ball. They couldn't kick a ball. Most of them wouldn't run five steps. And now we've got them to the point where they're actually participating in it. They're running, kicking the ball, you know, actually making a few moves with the ball. It's, you know, the, even the, the lowest functioning players are starting to come along. 
An important part of Special Olympics is parent involvement. Larry and Pat Whitney from Chatham, Ontario are here to cheer on their son, Jason. With the silver medal already under his belt, Jason prepared for the men's 400 meters. That. Jason is 18 years old and has really come a long way since joining Special Olympics just a couple of years ago. Well, I think everything has come that he really enjoys um, all kinds of sports now, which he never used to. And um, it, of course that gives him a level which he can talk to other people about, which is really nice because now he can go up and he can talk about the Blue Jays game or whatever, and, and uh, that's super for him and for others because they know what to talk about too with him. Jason won his second silver medal in the 400 meters. It was another proud moment as he accepted the medal. Events of this magnitude don't just happen. It takes months of dedicated effort and thousands of hours to make these games a success. We've been here since Wednesday, and we're just filling in wherever we can, all duties. Uh, Wednesday, we stuffed 1,000 gym bags, 800 for the athletes and 200 for the coaches, with all the goodies they had inside them. And I got stuck in raking sand for the beach party and husking corn for the barbecue. It's been all kinds of fun. The swimming competition included freestyle, backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly, and individual medal. Athletes were divided into different age groups and must compete in at least two, but not more than four events. That's not including the relay. I feel really good. This has been marvelous weekend. Uh, it's been very tough competition. Uh, I've enjoyed it. Uh, Region 6 has, and all the coaches today, have worked so hard this weekend. It's worth it this weekend to work hard for it. And I really enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> A good time was had by all. And really, when you think about it, for these athletes, that's what Special Olympics is all about. Celebrities Breakfast in support of Canadian Special Olympics live from the Sky Dome in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Calgary, Alberta, a good friend of Special Olympics to the Sports Celebrities Breakfast, Canadian Special Olympics, Mr. Stan Foster. He's 
are the heroes we cry out for. It's the soul that struggles in search for more. And one who lives in risk because destiny would have no other way. It seems these are the heroes when glory's hand is raised. The common man who goes without soul praise can fall on one whose shoulders will carry fame. These are the heroes of the game. Inside.